this is Kingsway Culture Loving God Loving People Impacting Nations Welcome to Kingsway Ministries. Let's have a look at our online service. And uh, we are busy with a new series and I'll talk more about that. But this week, while I was preparing, I read something, and I wanted to share this with you. It was so beautiful. It was somebody that wrote an article uh, to the newspaper. And as they wrote this article to the newspaper, there was a lot of response towards this article that was written. So I want to read this article that appeared into the newspapers. It said the following. It said, a churchgoer wrote a letter to the editor of the newspaper and complained, hallelujah, <laughs> we love complaining. N none of you, of course, you never ever complain. Come on. On the way to church, I complained about something. Come on. Because I saw something and I said, this is not right. And it's our first reaction to complain. So this churchgoer, amen, a churchgoer, that's you, was complaining. And he said the following. He said, it made no sense to go to church every Sunday. Well, thank the Lord there's no amen. You did not say amen. I'm so glad. Even in the first service, nobody said amen. He says, I've gone to church for 30 years now. He says, and in the time that I've gone to church, I've heard something like 3,000 sermons. It's quite a lot. He says, but for the life of me, I can't remember a single one of them. I wonder how many of us can remember what was preached last week Sunday. Oh, there's one honest hand, praise God. How many of you can remember what was preached two Sundays ago? Let's see the hands now. My wife, you should remember I was preaching. Can you remember? I'm, 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 I'm glad. I paid her to say that. How many of you can remember the very first sermon of this year? I'm so glad I wasn't preaching. Dr. Gerard was preaching, so, you know, that's his fault, you know, that you didn't remember what was preaching. I know I'm teasing. But many of us can't even remember what was preached last week, Sunday. And this is how this guy felt. He says, he says I, I can't even remember for the life of me over those 3,000 sermons that I had. I can't really remember many of these sermons. But I really believe that in this church, you can. Thank you for that, Amen. Thank you, thank you. No, no, no. He says, I can't remember. And then he says the following. He says, so I think I'm wasting my time. And I think I'm wasting the pastor's time. Shame. Because he has to prepare all these sermons. Now, this is quite a nice, you know, thing to write in the newspaper. And obviously, there was a lot of response from churchgoers and non-churchgoers. Those who are staying at home are saying, I can see some of you like, I wonder where the pastor's going with this. Is he going to give us a hard time because we haven't been in church in a long time? No, 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 relax. You can relax. I'm not going to do anything like that, okay? So, so, so he wrote this, and there was response. People wrote in, and the guys that are staying at home says, yes, I agree with you. I also can't remember any of the sermons. Obviously, faithful church goers would write and say, no, you must go to church. You must go to church. You need the church. And then eventually, after a lot of articles, there was one article that came in, and this guy wrote the following. He said, I've been married for 30 years now. In that time, my wife has cooked some, more or less, 32,000 meals. That's a lot of meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu for, for a single one of those meals. Shame. I hope his wife did not read the article. He says, but I do know this. They all nourished me and gave me the strength I needed to do my work. If my wife had not given me these meals, I would be physically dead today. Likewise, if I had not gone to church for nourishment, I would also be spiritually dead today. And I thought, what a beautiful article. I, I think this guy responded well, you know. Whether your wife cooks great meals or not, it doesn't matter. You are eating those meals because you know if you don't eat that food, you are going to die physically. And the very same way with coming to church. 
And I know nowadays, especially after COVID, people say, no, I'm not going to go to church anymore. I don't need church. Uh, you know, I can watch online. I've got all the best preachers online. Why must I listen to you, pastor? You know, I'd rather listen to somebody else who has a bigger church and, and a better preacher than you and blah, 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 blah. But listen to this. We need each other. We need each other. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, we are better together. We are better together. Because this is the series that we are busy with now. We are busy with the series called Better Together. Because you see, we need to grow. In 2024, you and I need to grow. And what this guy was saying, actually, the guy that replied, he says, hey, just as much as I need to eat food to grow physically, so I need to go to church to get my spiritual food so that I can grow. We need each other. Amen? We need each other. And I saw this image, uh, and I thought this image really just it kind of said what I wanted to say this whole sermon. You know, right on top, you'll see a little plant. There's a little plant there. And this little plant has grown because of all the roots at the bottom. Look at all those roots. Man, if it wasn't for all those roots and all the nourishing that happens below the ground, we will not see growth. And that's why he might say, but I don't think I'm going to come to church anymore. I don't need church. You know, no, 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 no. They're just here for this. No, you need us. And we need you. We need one another. We are better together. And in 2024, we believe our theme. That's why you'll see this. It looks quite very busy. When you come in, it's not that we didn't tidy the church before you came to church. It must look like that, okay? Because this year, we believe is a year of rising up a year of building, and a year of growth. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to grow in 2024. Come on, say, I'm going to grow in 2024. And I remember one morning while I was praying, the Lord showed me the acronym for the word GROW, and I quickly wrote it down, and I preached about this in January. Maybe you don't remember that. But I preached about that in January, and I said the word, the, uh, the word uh, GROW, that acronym means the following. The G is for putting God first. If you want to grow in 2024, you need to put God first. And we did that. We started in January with a fast, a Daniel fast. How else are you going to put God first if you don't put food aside and put God first? So we challenge you to fast with us, and I'm going to challenge you to continue to fast. But we also, after that, at our Holy Spirit Fire Conference, where we put God first, put TV aside, and come to church, and we are growing. And then we had our Fan Into Flame uh, series in the month of February, where, where you could put God first. And now, I really believe this month is the R of the word grow is my relationships. I need to grow in 2024 in my relationships. I need to grow in my relationship with God, and I need to grow in my relationship with people. That's why next week, Sunday, we are having an equipping encounter evening at 6 o'clock, where we want to help you to maybe understand your wife, or your husband, or your children, or your mom, or your dad, where we're going to take a look at the five love languages. Now, in my house, my wife, and my daughter's love language is exactly the same. It's physical touch. So from the minute I get out of the car, I already start walking like this. I go and I see my wife and I go and I give her a hug. And I say, I know it's the last one on my physical touch is my last love language. You see, I can't tap her because that's wrong. I need to really love Mwah, physical touch. Because you know, she has an emotional bank. How many of you know that? She has an emotional bank. And for me to work on this relationship, I need to understand her love language. So I know by doing this, I am scoring a lot of brownie points. She says, you are. I know her emotional tank is going ding, 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 ding. Hallelujah. As husbands, we want to withdraw from the bank, but there's nothing in the bank. Okay. I want to withdraw from this bank, but there's nothing in there. My daughter is even worse. You know, she's a teenager. And when I walk into the home, sometimes my, my mind is preoccupied and I quickly want to run and do A, B, C, D. And if I do that, I actually hurt her because all she wants is, hello, daddy. And I'm like, hello, Lisa. And I mustn't like, hello. Hello, Lisa. How are 
was your day. Because it's really physical touch. Okay? So we want to help you this year to grow. You say, I'm not sure how. Well, what are you talking about? Next week, Sunday night, 6 o'clock, for the whole family. You are not excused. If you're in a relationship, we're going to have a couple thing here. The teenagers, we're going to take them separate. We're going to do the love language with them. Even children needs to know what love language is all about. And we're going to do that next week, Sunday at 6 o'clock. Don't stay home. Don't watch TV come. We're going to have a blessed time together because we are better together. But we are only better together if we understand one another. My wife knows one of my love languages at the top is gifts. So if she wants a lot out of me, she needs to buy me presents. Okay? She needs to words of affirmation. She needs to tell me that I am the best. Oh, come on, church. You know, that's how we are growing. And that's why this year we are going to grow and then obviously obedience and God's word. But what I want to share with you this morning, better together, starts with our relationship with God. God wants you to have a relationship with Him. How many of you know Psalms 23? Nobody. I must say the first of us, they quoted it like this. Let's see if you know Psalms 23, and I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. It says, the Lord is my, the Lord is my, I shall not, oh, some translation says I shall not lack. The Lord is my shepherd. Guess what? In the book of John, you find John says, the Lord is my good shepherd. The Lord is a good shepherd. And he he knows his sheep and his sheep knows him and the, the sheep knows his voice. Do you still recognize the voice of the Lord? Do you still recognize the good shepherd? What does verse 2 say? He makes me to lie down what? Ah. I said in the first service, the problem is our green pastures are not like green pastures anymore. It looks like somebody put you in a washing machine. And they press that thing for spin, and you are spinning around. And now and then you're coming up for air, you know. And then you see this little window. And we're like that. There's no green pastures anymore. We're running from point A to point B to point C. And we're not experiencing the good shepherd that leads us to green pastures. He leads me beside the, which waters? The, 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 the tempest, the storm. Or, or which waters? The? Did you know that a, a sheep is, is not a very clever, forgive me sheep, it's not a very clever animal. A sheep sometimes before, you know, they, they, they shave them and they take off all the wool, you know. They, they are full of wool. Let's call it wool. Full of air. And a sheep, when a sheep is tired or when a sheep is thirsty, it will go to waters and it will start drinking in a river. It will start drinking the water. But it doesn't know that this thing around it, when it gets wet, gets heavy. And that sheep drinks and drinks and drinks and it doesn't understand and it puts his head deeper and deeper in the water to get more and more water and the next minute, kaboom, it falls into the water because of all this going on around it. It's like, you know, it has all this wool. It's like almost like a duvet around its head. And the next minute, bam, it's in the water and the stream takes it. And what happens? The shepherd runs Because the shepherd has a rod, and the shepherd takes that rod, and he takes it around the sheep's neck, and it pulls it out of the water. Because that's what a good shepherd does. Some of you are not experiencing the green pastures of life. Some of you are in this washing machine, and God says, I want to pull you out. I want to pull you out. There's people here this morning, and God says, I'm going to pull you out of that. I'm going to pull you out of those circumstances because I want to lead you. I want to lead you. I want to lead you besides still waters. Then verse 3 says, he restores my. He leads me in the path of. So why are you living an unrighteous lifestyle? Hello. He leads me in the path of righteousness. He shows me what way to walk. And then I say, I'll do it my way. And I do it the Frank Sinatra way and I go a different way. Because Anthony knows better, I'm not going to walk this path, I'm going to walk my own path, and then I end up in unrighteousness, and then I blame God. Come on. 
Then I blame God. Look at my life. Look at where I'm at. I'm in this wishy-washy and look at me. And it's, it's all God's fault. Why, Lord? In the meantime, I'm not walking in the path of righteousness. I'm walking my own path, my path of unrighteousness. And then we want God to bless us. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I want to tell you something. Many times we will go through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death. How many of you have had some challenges since the beginning of the year? Can I see your hands? Let's be honest. How many of you have had some trials and tribulations that you faced? Man, it's been an interesting year. Towards the end of 2023, you would see on Facebook, people will say, oh, I can't wait for 2024. It's going to be so much better. I can't wait for 2024. Oh, man, I can't wait until 2023 is over. And then we get until we get to the end of 2024 and we say, oh, what a year. I can't wait for 2025. And we just like that. We as human beings are like that. But I remember what the prophet said during our Holy Spirit Fire Conference. He said, hey, if you want another 2023 in 2024, start saying the things that you said in 2023. Stop speaking death over your life and start speaking this over your life. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. Come on. Can I get an amen? amen? And then verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with? You know what that all uh, resembles? It resembles the anointing, the presence of God. You anoint my head with your presence, oh God. My cup is empty. My cup is empty. Is that what Psalm 23 says? My cup? My cup. So why are you walking around like your cup is not running over? Do you know Psalm 23? <laughs> we can quote it with our eyes closed, but we do not understand what God is saying here. My cup runs over surely, and I love this verse. What will follow you? Goodness and? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. It's okay if it follows Dr. Gerard. I don't care. As long as it follows me. As long as it follows me, surely and goodness and mercy shall follow me all. Come on, say somebody, say all. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I want to talk to you today about sitting at the king's table. I want to talk to you today about this Psalm 23, that God has invited you to sit at a table. God is giving you an invitation. Now, if you know an invitation is an interesting thing, you can be invited to somebody, somebody can invite you, and when you're invited, you take the invitation and you say, hmm, I don't think I'm going to go. Because an invitation has two things, the person that invites you and what they invited you to. <laughs> so if somebody invites you to a place that say, oh, I'm going to take you out for dinner, and it's going to be at whatever place, and it's going to be amazing, and it's nice people. You don't even look at your calendar. You say, yes, I'm in. And you tell your wife afterwards, and you clear your calendar because these people are taking you out. But how many of you have experienced this? Somebody invites you, and you don't really like the people or kind of like them. And they invite you just to their home for maybe coffee or tea. And then you reply and you say, you know what? I have to check with my wife. I think we have something on that day. I will check with my wife and come back to you. Come on, be honest. How many of you have done that? Nobody in this church. Wow, we are truly better together. Hey? But sometimes an invitation is exactly like that. Now, the other day, my wife and I, we, we, I received this call from this uncle of mine, and he's extremely rich. Man, this guy has got money upon money upon money. He has got houses all over, and he told me he just bought a house in Mauritius, and he has, you know, just showed me some photos of this house, and, and it's absolutely amazing. It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful house. You know, you go to that house, and it's just glass and it's amazing and it's on the sand and you just you walk out of the front porch and you're on the that beautiful white sand of Mauritius 
and the beach is there, and the sea is there, and you can see everything. And, and when you go there, there's a butler, you know, that helps you. There's somebody that cooks the food. You know, you don't have to do nothing. You just sit and you say, I'm thirsty. Boom, you've got something in your hand to drink. You say you're hungry, they make food. It's amazing. And he said, uh, I want to bless you and your wife, uh, and I want to give you a whole week from a Sunday to a Sunday to come and stay there. I'll pay the, fl uh, the flight tickets. You know, it's only like four hours to fly. It's not even that far to fly. You can do it. And I'm like, oh, yes, this sounds good. This sounds good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then the next minute I realized, oh, it's from a Sunday to a Sunday. Uh, I went and I preached in Belitu last week, Sunday. So this means I'll be out of church for three Sundays. I don't think we can accept this invitation. But maybe, you know, when I said to my wife, maybe, let's, let's speak to the leadership. I'm sure they will release us. I mean, come on. Who would not like to go to Mauritius? With all this luxury, you forget about five star. This is the best of the best of the best. And we got so excited because somebody blessed us for our honeymoon years ago to Mauritius. So we, it was like a second honeymoon and I was so excited and I couldn't wait. We just wanted to go. I mean, all expenses paid. Luxury galore. And the next minute my wife said, but what about this problem. I said, excuse me? She says, what about our dog? Which is like, unfortunately, a child in our house. I looked at it and I said, um, I think we can make a plan. There's a lot of ways to get rid of this dog. I mean, there's a lot of ways. I mean, that's where my mind was. I mean, a dog stopping me from accepting this invitation. I mean, the leadership we can deal with, the church will forgive us. I'm sure they'll forgive us a week in Mauritius, but this thing cannot stop us from going to Mauritius. I mean, it's an invitation. How can this dog, this little, it's cute, but how can this thing that I didn't even know want in the first place stop us from going to Mauritius? I mean, it's an amazing invitation. Now, needless to say, there's no such invitation. <laughs> I'm just telling the story. There's no such invitation. But what if there was? What if my uncle did phone me? He does have a house in Mauritius. That's true. And he is rich. But what if he did phone me and invited my wife and I to go there? And this was my excuse. We can't go because we have a little dog. We can't go, what are we going to do about this dog? What if that was the excuse we had or the reason we had not to accept this invitation? Now, let me tell you something. Psalm 23 verse 5 says the following. It says, you prepare a table before me in the New King James. I love the way that God's word put it. He says the following in translation. It says, he prepared a banquet for me. How many of you know what a banquet is? Man, if you go to that place and there's just food galore and you can eat whatever you want to and you can just enjoy it, nobody, nobody's looking at how big your plate is, nobody's worried because their plates are worse than yours and, and you're just packing in. You know, when you go to these banquets, you feel like, Shanti, this bag is too small. Why did you bring a bigger bag? You know, th that's a banquet. You know, when you feel like you can even take stuff home, you know, you wish you had a bigger bag or can they bring you Tupperware or can they, you know, that's a banquet. And Psalms 23 says that the Lord prepared a banquet before you. He prepared a banquet for you. He says that your cup overflows. The New Living Translation says he prepared a feast for me. Say for me. He prepared a feast for you. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with sadness, with curses, with bad things. With my cup overflows with blessings. You serve me a six-course dinner. Hallelujah. I don't know what that looks like, but it sounds good. I know a three-course and I had the privilege of being at a five course once, but I don't know what a six course is, but it sounds good. Amen. God prepares a six course dinner right in front of your enemies. I love that. You revive my drooping head. And I pray 
that if you accept this invitation of the Lord today to sit at the table that He has prepared for you, that you will no longer sit with the drooping head. You will no longer be like that little sheep that sits and drinks the water and falls into the water because of all the things that are holding you back from receiving the invitation that God is giving you today to come and sit at His table because He wants your cup to brim with blessings. Now, let me tell you something. God is inviting you today. 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 This invitation is for all of us here, even if you're watching online. God is inviting you today because He has prepared a feast for you. He has prepared a table for you. And He wants you to enjoy this table that He has prepared for you. A table that overflows with blessings. Amen. And you know what he does? He says, come. He says, Anthony, come. Anthony, I want you to come and sit at this table. And then he opens up this chair for me. And he says, Anthony, please take a seat. You know, not like what you do when you take your wife out to dinner. You forget to pull out the chair for her. God pulls out the chair for you. And he says, Anthony, come. Come and have this dinner with me. Anthony, I want you to come and spend time. Look at the stable. Look at the stable. Wow, Lord. I'm so excited. Look at these grapes, man. These are, mm, mm. Oh, this is good. Mm, mm. Mm. Lord, what you have prepared for me is good. Mm. I want of these green ones. Can I try green one? Oh, yes. You are welcome, my son. I prepared this for you. Try green one. Oh, mm. Mm. I thought it was going to be those plastic grapes. But what God prepared for me was a table of blessing. And then the Lord comes and he says, Anthony, the reason why I invited you to this table is because I want to spend time with you. I want to fellowship with you. Yes, I prepared this feast for you. I prepared everything that you like, man. I, I know you even like Pepsi Max, Anthony. So here's your Pepsi Max. Enjoy your Pepsi Max. And I'm like, wow. Lord, this is truly, this is amazing. I like this. Wow, Pepsi Max. Drinking it on, on stage in church. I like you, Lord. Mm. This is good. I like this table. I love, Lord, how did you know that I like Pepsi Max so much? And I'm not advertising Pepsi Max above Coca-Cola. Lord, you know I love Pepsi Max. I love sitting at this table. And then the Lord says, Anthony, what I actually actually want to talk to you about is, you know this week, when you and your wife were in the car, you didn't treat her very well. You, You... you didn't treat her the way you should, Anthony. You know, you, you know that, you know, her love language is Dutch. But don't worry, Kingsway has an equipping encounter this coming Sunday evening, 6 o'clock on the 10th of March. You must go there. Take your wife, take your daughter. Yes, Lord, I, I, I know I didn't treat her well. But, you know, with all due respect, Lord, you're not married to her. I am. Did you see how she spoke to me? Did you see how, you know, she just totally disrespects me? I mean, Lord, I understand what Adam feels like when he said, Lord, it's this woman you gave me. Yeah, it's the woman you gave me, Lord. This wife you gave me. Anthony, you know, that wife is such a blessing in your life. Do you know that she gets up in the morning and she prays for you? Do you know that the only way I can bless you is the way you serve me and the way you treat your wife. You will experience blessing. Your cup will overflow. I think you need to take a good look at how you are operating with your wife. I think you need to start spending more time with her. You're so busy, running here, running there. When last did you have a proper date night with her? 
Lord, my wife goes to bed 7.30 at night, which is true, by the way. I, I can hardly plan a date night. And besides, I don't have the funds. I don't have money. So how am I going to treat her to a date night? The Lord is your shepherd. You shall lack nothing. All you have to do is just spend time with your wife. You see, that's the table that you and I, we are invited to this table today. And all God wants you to do is come and sit at this table and enjoy this banquet. Wow, Lord, look at this. This is fancy stuff. Yes, my son, I prepared it for you. And then God pours you this lovely juice to drink, and he says it's yours. I even got this bread, Anthony, that I want you to enjoy. It's, it's a bit hot. Thank you, Lord. They, they say it should be like that. It's crispy. I want you to enjoy this, Anthony. I've got this whole feast here for you because I want to spend time with you. You know what I love about the man but with the name of Enoch? I want to take you to Hebrews 11 verse 6 and Genesis 5. And when you read this passage, you will find three very important things in this passage. You will find that, that Enoch loved God. He had faith in God. He loved God so much. It says that he was even taken up into heaven. By faith, Enoch was taken up into heaven. It says that he was known as somebody, as a person who pleased God. And because he pleased God, guess what? God blessed him in abundance. You know what it means to please God? It means this, accepting the invitation to sit at the table and spend time with God. In Genesis 5, you will find that he says, after he became the father of, thank you, he walked faithfully with God. Enoch walked faithfully with God. And you see, God is inviting you to this table, and God invited Enoch, and Enoch accepted the invitation. And now you can go to the next slide. You see, he accepted the invitation because there are three things that you and I have to do. We have to believe that God exists. We have to believe in God's existence and truly believe. And when you believe, you will please God. And when you please God, he says he's the rewarder of those who seek him. Lord, because I seek you, I know you even know that my favorite drink is Pepsi Max. And thank you, Lord, that I can spend time with you and enjoy my Pepsi Max. You see, God is the rewarder of those who seek him. Now, I know some of you think, Really? Is God going to give you Pepsi Max, Anthony? <laughs> Pastor, is he really going to give you Pepsi Max? Well, he loves me so much. Why not? He prepared a banquet for you. But look at that last one. He walked faithfully with God. There's a beautiful English song that says, and he walked with me, and he talked with me. You see, that's what God wants to do. Enoch walked with God. Enoch talked with God. There was a relationship. Many of us go through life and we go through our circumstances and we have a problem. I'll fix this problem myself. You know, I will fix this problem. I know how to do this. I am good. I have studied. I will fix the problem, but you don't even have the right tool for the problem. And all God says is, Anthony, don't worry about those things. Come and sit at the table. Let me tell you, you are worried about your teenage daughter. You think you're not a good father. Let me tell you, this is what you should do. Anthony, I want you to, when you get home at night, just put aside everything else. And just for a few minutes, listen to your daughter. Speak to your daughter. Give her love. Give her attention. Because you know what? She's at this age where she's really looking at a, at a, at a father figure, somebody that will speak into her life. Somebody. You know what? Guess what, Anthony? One day, she's going to choose a husband that's most probably got the qualities that you have. And you know that thing that you are battling with? No, Lord, I have no issues. I am a pastor. I have no problems. Uh, sorry, Lord. No, no, it's not my fault people drive in front of me. I mean, seriously. Can't they drive? Where did they get their licenses, Lord? I mean, I mean, it's not my fault. This guy, he came in front of me. Patience. Oh. Yes. 
Yes, I think I lack patience, Lord. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm spending too, too little time with my daughter and with my wife. Yes, Lord, I, I know I'm even spending not enough time around this table, a table where you prepared a feast for me, Lord, where everything that is around this table is good. Hmm. Hmm. I can sit here all day, Lord, but I know they have to go home. I know they're already checking their watches and saying, Shoo! He's preaching long today. I think you need to invite them to the table, Lord. Not me, I'm here. I think maybe they need to come sit here and you have to talk to them about it. What does it mean to walk with God? And I know Tanya, during the services, in the first service, I saw her sitting here and I, I thought she wanted to say something and I, 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 it just went by me. And between the two services, while she was in the prayer room, something happened. I wanted to quickly share what happened with you, because it really relates to this, and then I'm almost finished, I promise, okay? Um, so while we were busy praying in the prayer room, we usually walk up and down, um, and I was walking, and Pastor Tian was walking, like, that side, and I heard him praying, but I just felt the Lord say that you needed to be close to him to hear him. And sometimes we get in a situation where we say, Lord, but I don't hear you. I don't hear you speaking to me. But are you even close to God? Are you even near him? Because that's the only way that you will be able to hear him is you're actually close to him. Like I have a relationship with Amanda, but she's downstairs. And if she talks now, I'm not going to be able to hear her. So I need to go to her, sit with her, and then I will be able to hear her talk. God is inviting you. Yes, come on, give God a praise offering. God is inviting you to this table this morning. But you see what the problem with this table is? There are things that are holding us back. There are things that are holding us back to sit at this table. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's TV. Maybe it's Netflix. Maybe it's gym. Maybe it's your work. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but things are holding you back from enjoying this table that he prepared for you. There was a quote that I wrote, and it's as follows. It says that you and I need to intentionally invest in growth every day because growth doesn't happen in a day, but it happens daily. You see, we want growth now. It must, now I must be sorted out everything. My wife must be sorted out. My daughter must be sorted out. My family, my finances, everything must be sorted out right now. But you see, there's no ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. But the more I sit around this table, the more I commit myself to grow daily and spend time daily with God, the more I will experience the blessings, the feast in front of my enemies. God has that in store for you today.